Welcome to this week's story update. We're gonna be speaking with uh, Lauren Goldbranson, but first we're gonna take a look at her story. I'm Lauren Goldbranson, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York, originally. I never really uh, felt like being gay was uh, so political until I went to the archives, the Lesbian Her Story archives for the first time. It, it's just like a magical kind of place. It's, you know, an archive. It's like a library of all lesbian specific um, books and articles and pictures and videos and everything. And just going through all that stuff and like realizing the, like the shoulders that I'm standing on and like all the work that people did so that I can be where I am and like that gay youth can be where they are. When I first went there, I walked in and I was just like, first of all, how did I not know this existed? Secondly, yeah. I don't even know where to begin because you walk in and it's like books and you're like, okay, books. But you don't really realize that there's so much more than books there. The first box that I opened was probably the Lesbian Avengers box, um, which is this like fierce radical dyke uh, activist group and being able to like actually touch, you know, their banners and like listen to the, the tape from the answering machine, you know, like hateful shit on the answer, answering machine. <laughs> it's not just like read an article. I mean, that's cool too, reading an article about a, a, an organization, but like actually being able to like hold the stuff that they held, you know, feel yeah. the shirts that they wore, things like that I really like. And, you, and you're able to do that there. So it's just really inspiring to, to like kind of keep that momentum going and like keep you know fighting the good fight for uh, gay rights and lesbian rights and queer rights I guess in general and through that I kind of got involved in the Dyke March <clears throat> also which happens every year the last Saturday of, of June and being a part of the Dyke March is also um, how I feel really in touch with my political queer side and marching with all those women down Fifth Avenue is just the most amazing feeling to me. I think there was this moment, actually there was this moment on, at the, at the Dyke March, I was standing on this rock, uh, like right near my favorite building in New York, which is the Flatiron Building. And I was just watching this like sea of women and like I was helping to lead this like sea of women that were just like all fierce and like screaming and like, you know, rambunctious and all that good stuff just leading them in and like trying to like find where all the marshals were and how to take care of everyone that was involved. It was just really rewarding to me to kind of like start and finish with this amazing march, so. All right, welcome Lauren, how are you doing? I'm doing well, all things considered, how are you? Doing exactly the same very well, <laughs> uh, all things considered. Um, so in your story, you talked about uh, how, how big of an impact finding the Lesbian Her Story archives were to you. Are you still involved with them at all, with LHA? Um, I've been away from Brooklyn for the last couple of years. I only came back this past March. And obviously since COVID has been going on, um, the archives has been closed. Um, prior to that, I've been more focused on, on uh, my job. I, I was, I'm an ER nurse and um, have been for the last five years. And so while I do attend archive events and things like that, I haven't been um, as active as like an organizer or anything like that. But financially, yes, I, I'm a, a supporting member of the archives for sure. Also part of your story, in addition to the archives, was activism and discovering uh, your first march and, and kind of, you know, tapping into that part of your life. Uh, especially recently, there's been a lot of protests, a lot of marches, a lot of activism uh, the past few months. How have you been involved? And also there's been Pride Month and, you know, have you been involved much or have, you're a nurse now, so I, maybe you've been super busy and maybe avoiding crowds, I'm not sure. How, what's your activist life like these days? So I, I would say that being a nurse is also like being an activist. Um, but in addition to that, I've also been on the streets as well uh, with everyone for Black Lives Matter. And for the Dyke March specifically that we spoke about, I've been um, active in participating in the Dyke March for, since we last spoke every year. Uh, this year in particular, though, we took a step back and decided in lieu of doing the actual Dyke March this year that we would center ourselves as a committee um, and help amplify Black leaders. Um, so we 
did a number of marches, including uh, working with a black trans activist named Selu, who we did one of their marches in June, and then we're doing another one this coming Saturday as well, August 1st, I don't know when this is coming out, but um, it's about allyship and how to participate as an ally and what that really means. And um, we also did a march about confronting July 4th, that was black, uh, black lesbian led, and uh, another uh, black led march by a former um, lesbian Avenger, which is funny because I was also speaking about that 10 years ago as well. So I think our, sh our focus has shifted a little bit um, to supporting people already leading um, and, you know, looking for ways to amplify those voices. Great. If anyone wants to like learn more about all the things that you just mentioned and, and find resources, is there a way to, is it, is there like a Dyke March website where people can go to, to kind of learn more about that? Yeah, um, there is a Dyke March website. You can just look up NYC Dyke March on Google. I think it's nycdykemarch.com. I didn't look beforehand. Um, but you definitely, I mean, I think we're most active on uh, Instagram and Facebook. So you can find us at NYC Dyke March on Facebook or NYC Dyke March on Instagram. And, you know, you'll learn more about all of the actions that we're supporting and all of the political movements that we're working with. Great. That's awesome. So you've, you've stayed very active in the, the uh, activist community. And, uh, and I also really love what you said about how being a nurse is a form of activism. So uh, thanks for all that you do as a nurse uh, as well. And what, what do you think that, like, if there's someone uh, who's looking to get involved with lesbian activism or to, you know, what would you recommend someone do, you know, like the way that you discovered the archives, uh, what would you, where would you direct someone who might be watching this and kind of dabbling in young lesbian activism? Uh, what would you, or another way of thinking about that is what would you uh, tell yourself, you know, as a younger lesbian? Well, I mean, things are a lot different now. Uh, <laughs> I think information is just so much more accessible to people. I mean, especially if you have internet access, I should say. But uh, I would say just going to pages like NYC Dyke March and then just figuring out like what accounts are linked to that and just kind of exploring that way. I mean, I'm learning a lot now, you know, about activism and about <laughs> how to treat people in the street, you know, I'm, I'm learning so much myself. So the internet obviously is a very uh, broad um, and great place to, to figure out how to get involved. And there are a lot of people who have accounts based on like, on education, on like how to be a activist, how to like get involved, how to call your, you know, city council members, um, it's a lot easier now, I think, just to kind of figure things out and, and um, a lot of people who are leading the way and like giving you concrete ways to act um, is great. And just, you know, trying to form af um, affinity groups with your dyke friends, you know, and making it fun as well as powerful and, and uh, getting out there in any way that you can. So what else, you've told us that you're a nurse. Has there been any other big life changes uh, going on in the past, I think we last spoke 10 years ago. So the past decade, anything big going on yeah, in your life? Yeah, a few things have happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a nurse I, and I, I did uh, two years of travel nursing. I, I did ER nursing out in California and a bunch of places in uh, Portland, Oregon, in um, Phoenix, Arizona, and I think that's it, but a bunch of places in California and I'm just obsessed with the West Coast. And um, I was able to do that with my partner and we, who is also a nurse, she's a pediatric oncology nurse and we just recently got engaged. So oh, that's congratulations. Really special. Thank you. Yeah. So we are getting married next July on our fourth anniversary and uh, hopefully It'll go as planned. I mean, we have another year or so of who knows what. I mean, who knows what the world's going to look like in a year. But it's good to, you know, be positive and 
look forward to things, even though everything is kind of crappy right now. Yeah, but you got to have hope and you have to have things to look forward to. And, you know, that's what keeps people going, I think. So uh, that's Absolutely. great. And congratulations again. Uh, is Thank there anything you. else you want to share? Um, any thoughts or any updates or any messages that you want to get out there? Probably a lot of things. I think that it's important to find ways in which you can participate in activism without draining yourself, um, ways for it to be sustainable because it's a marathon, not a sprint, for example, and we have a lot of, a lot of fighting to do still um, for everyone, you know, it's not, and it's not all about you and your identity and your, and your place in the, in the world, but, you know, looking out to your community and seeing the ways in which you can better the world. I don't know, just figure out the small things that you can do because we can all do something even from our homes. Yeah. Any activism, big and small, all makes a difference in some way, I think. So, um, all right. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, and if anyone has any questions for Lauren, just leave them in the comments and Lauren will ask that you uh, check back periodically and, and maybe answer some questions if you're okay with that. And if you want to watch Lauren's story, um, it's on our website. All of our stories are on Facebook and Instagram uh, and we're uploading every single week. So uh, you can watch them all there and you can check back next week for our next story update. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.